we're going to have Dr. Sherman uh, teach us about something very fundamental, and I, I was debating about whether to put it first up or late, but I think this is a topic everybody, everybody wanted to learn last year. He has gotten awards from our residents and fellows to teach EKGs. He's an electrophysiologist. He could have taught us about anything else, but I would like Dr. Sherman to tell us about EKGs. Yes, hi. Um, so I'm Paul Sherman, and I'm going to give you a skill today, uh, or refresher skill, basically. You should be all very familiar with this. Um, so the first, I want to group it in topics, OK? And to make it easy for you, um, we're going to start with cardiac arrest. We are the EKZ that you most know about cardiac arrest. And in reality, if you're able to do this, you shouldn't be here uh, or listen to this topic. Um, and I cannot do this. But um, I would really like to learn, though, OK? So first of all, um, I always is an easy miss, um, the QT prolongation, OK? As you can see, this is a massive QT prolongation. Normally, the, the end of the T wave has to finish before the halfway of the RR interval. That's an easy, glam way to find out that you have prolonged QT. Another way, uh, a little bit more sophisticated, is to measure it, right? And if you have a big box, it's usually 200 milliseconds. Every millimeter is 40 milliseconds. So if you pass two big boxes, you're above 400. If you get into the third big box, you're in 600 milliseconds. So that's pretty fair. I don't expect to people walk around with measuring square roots and all that. So I'm going to give you an easy formula on how to correct the QT. Uh, you just, for every 10 beats above 60, you're going to add 20 milliseconds. So you measure, then you look for the heart rate, and add any 20 milliseconds. When you're in the 480 to 500, that is prolonged QT. Straight, OK? So a few words about long QT syndrome. Uh, there's one that is um, exercise induced, which is the most common. Then you have the one that is induced by nose, by noise. Usually that's on the board. It's not in real life. but you listen like uh, somebody hear a voice or he ring the phone and that patient collapse, that's when he has to ring the bell and maybe he has um, induced long QT syndrome. Other people could have him while asleep and um, these are the difference between them. The first one usually is a broad T wave, the second one it's a um, double T wave and the third one is just the prolonged ST segment. The key is just to start beta blockers and avoid the competitive sport. Genetic testing actually is pretty helpful, up to 70%. And uh, it sometimes is recommended, I, the fibrillators in lung QT syndrome, especially when they have symptoms or history of cardiac arrest, or the QT is excessively long, OK? This is the opposite. Now you can see here how short is that QT, huh? Extremely short. And it really make it maybe 300 at the most, OK? Short QT syndrome is extremely rare. You barely will see an EKG in your life, but if you see it now, you'll recognize it. Um, the treatment is with quinidine. The key factor is if you see a young person with atrial fibrillation or ventricular fibrillation, they are susceptible to have this condition. Already familiar with this EKG, they already show it to you, so I'm not going to mention it too much, but this is classic Brugada EKG. Uh, don't miss it, recognize it, especially in B1, B2, B3, where they have this sail looking like a triangle. That's classic Brugada syndrome. This, this is what you have to put and memorize in your, your eyes, OK? A few words about Brugada syndrome. It's um, usually a mutation of the sodium channel. Genetic testing really not helpful. It's just 20% of the time. Very common in male, almost 9 to 1 ratio, and more common in Asia. And as you can see, the EKG finding that I clearly described to you, when you have symptoms and cardiac arrest, we recommend a defibrillator. All right, this is another EKG when you have to think about cardiac arrest. When you see somebody with significant findings of left ventricular hypertrophy, okay? The common finding is voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy, deep T wave inversion, which are non voltage criteria, left atrium enlargement. All these are suggestive of hypertrophy. If you don't have history of hypertension, that has to ring the bell. This is Holcomb. When you have significant deep T wave inversions in the precordial lead, you have to think in Holcomb. 
So myocardial hypertrophy has a variable penetrance and is the most common cause of sudden cardiac death in young athletes. So when you screen people and you see in your clinic young athlete, you do an EKG and you see this type of abnormality, you should ring the bell for further testing. Another classic in sudden cardiac arrest, um, this is the famous epsilon wave that you see right here, this small notching. This is actually an EKG from a rhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, where you can see this tiny fluctuation there, that's the epsilon wave, and you see deep T wave inversion from B1, B2, B3, B4, which is another criteria, okay? And the presence of our right bundle, which he doesn't have, okay? So these are the few criteria, the epsilon wave that we talk about, the inverted T wave in the precordial lead, okay, that we talk. And this is an extra one. If you see non-sustained or sustained ventricular tachycardia with left bundle branch block and with a superior axis, that's usually suggestive for okay, ARVD. We usually diagnose this with um, cardiac MRI. All right, chest pain, another important subject. What are the EKGs that we need to do in subject? Well, here is uh, how we used to do in school, you know, with the, how we see a tombstone ST elevation in anterior lead indicating acute anterior wall MI. But this is how the other students, they look like. Current recommends is pick your part up, down. <laughs> the, re <laughs> the reality is I have one reel for you here. Here you need to have a good interventional next to you when you see one of these, like Dr. Shah, and you can call him and speak dial, hey, I need you right here. And basically, you can see the ST elevations right here. And I actually, I chose this one because this is one of the most common myths when you have the posterior wall involvement. When you have the posterior wall involvement, actually goes what the usual that we are expected to see. This is what we expect to see, the ST elevations. But here in this case, you see massive depression and you see a nice tall R wave, which is actually an evolving infarct already in the posterior wall. So this is an inferoposterior infarct ongoing acutely that requires for you to attend immediately, call interventional, and activate the cath lab because time is muscle. Be careful with the inferior wall MIs and the posterior. Do not sedate the patient too much. Do not give too much morphine. They become hypotensive. Treat them with volume. Another cause of Chest pain. Here we have patient tachycardic with a right bundle. This is all trying to tell you I have a pulmonary embolism. Another sign is the S1 Q3T3. All right, very non-specific, but it's there. Sign is one. So here are the three findings on the EKG that you need to know: somebody tachycardic, somebody with a right bundle, and the S1 Q3T3. Other classic, just to finish, and I actually, I'm gonna finish before 15 minutes, Dr. Shah, you won't be able to stand up. <laughs> All the arrhythmias straighten up themselves at the end. So a few, this, you have to know, this is hyperkalemia, which is significantly widening, and actually it's like, I put you exactly that character through, you, you grab a normal EKG and you straighten it out, and that's how hyperkalemia looks. You flat the P wave, your QRS widens, and your T wave broadens too. So that's the classic. And the last one that I think you should know is the WPW. As you can see, um, there is a pre-excitation before the QRS. This is another one considered for tachycardia or cardiac arrest. So you can see here the pre-excitation, the short PR interval. All these findings are suggestive of WPW. And with that, I'm gonna finish. Thank you very much.